Hey Busters, welcome back to another Digimon card game video. Today, I'll be going over the red, blue, yellow, and green cards revealed on the official Digimon card game Twitter account, as well as the YouTube channels from the last two weeks. I'll be going over the purple and black and white cards in a separate video to keep this video short. Their official Twitter account posts daily reveals, and their YouTube channel also do reveal videos once a week. I've put a link in the description below for those interested. With that out of the way, let's start things off with the newly revealed red cards. First up, we have Vorvoma, a vanilla level 3 Digimon with 5000 DP, a play cost of 4, and an evil cost of 0. Here, Vorvoma ties for the highest DP for a level 3 Digimon. Unlike the other level 3 Digimon with 5000 DP, it costs 1 more to play versus the 3 play cost of Muchomon, but is now free to evolve into. Personally, I like the free evolution cost in exchange for a slightly higher play cost, but would definitely run Effect Digimon over Vanilla Digimon, but great in budget beatdown decks. Moving on to its original evolution line, we have the level 4 Laborvamon, a vanilla 5 play cost 2 evo cost Digimon with 6000 DP. Like Vorvamon, it ties for having the highest level 4 DP and reallocates 1 play cost into its evolution cost when compared to other similar Digimon like Dark Tyrannomon. Next up, we have Takenouchi Sora, a 3 cost red tamer. Here, during your turn, Sora has the ability to rest herself to give an attacking red Digimon you control plus 2000 DP for one turn. Overall, not a bad card, but I personally feel starter deck Taichi is better. While he gives only 1000 extra DP, it isn't limited to red nor attacking Digimon and costs only 2 to play. Our final red card for today is the 6 cost option card Final Elysian, or Shield of the Just in the West. It has the effect of destroying an opponent Digimon with 5000 DP or less, 8000 DP or less if you have a red tamer in play. Without a red tamer, this card is a bit underwhelming for its cost, as for 2 more memory, Gaia Force will destroy any one Digimon, but with a Tamer, 8000 DP will destroy almost all level 5 and lower Digimon. And for only 6 memory, that's not too bad. Moving on to the blue cards, we have Gomama, a 2000 DP level 3 Digimon with a cost of 4 and an evil cost of 0. It has no EOE, but has a rather useful card effect. Here, Gomama can be played for 1 less for each opponent Digimon with no evolution origins. As blue focuses on discarding origin cards, from the opponent, you'll more often than not be able to play Gomamon at a discount. However, a lack of EOE makes this Gomamon a bit harder to recommend as there are two cost level 3 Digimon with higher DP you can choose from. Moving on to its level 4 version, we have a new Ikakumon. Here, Ikakumon is a 5 cost 2 evil cost level 4 Digimon with 3000 DP. It has no card effect but has an EOE of allowing you to discard the top evolution origin card of one opponent Digimon when you attack. So far, all other cards had you discard starting from the bottom, but Ikakumon here lets you start from the top. This is pretty useful as the higher level EOEs are generally more powerful than the lower ones. Definitely worth running in blue decks, as it can deny Omega Mons and key cards in green decks. Continuing on with the Gomamon line, we have the 9000 DP Zudomon. Costing 6 to play and 3 to evolve, it has no effects nor EOEs. Not much to say, but it's a solid card nonetheless. Next, Mega Seedramon has a slightly lower DP of 8000 and a higher play cost of 8. It costs 3 to evolve into and has no EOE, but it does have a card effect of only allowing opponent Digimon with Evolution Origins to block it. This card is great with the introduction of black cards that swarm the field with Digimon with the blocker ability. Our final blue Digimon for today is Metal Seedramon. Having only 10,000 DP, but a play cost of 11 and evil cost of 3, it comes with 2 card effects. When played, it will bounce up to 2 level 4 or lower opponent Digimon back to their hand. Its second effect is carried over from Mega Seedramon, in that Metal Seedramon cannot be blocked except by evolved Digimon. While Metal Seedramon has a slightly lower DP than most level 6, its ability to be unblockable by non-evolved Digimon is quite useful. Its first effect, however, is quite hard to utilize as it only activates when played, meaning you'll be paying 11 to bounce back two wimpy level 4s at best. Sadly, Metal Seedramon is a bit lackluster at the moment. However, other blue cards not yet revealed may change how usable this card is. For the blue tamers, we have the 3 cost Shinomiya Rina, who has two effects. The first one allows you to rest her to give one of your attacking blue Digimon plus 1000 DP. 
The second effect reads, when you play her, you reveal the top three cards of your deck, and you may add a Digimon card with V in its name to your hand. Then put the remaining cards under your deck in any order. And as always, it has the security effect of playing itself when checked. Here we have our somewhat first archetype card. The first effect is a solid single buff, but the second effect is where the money is at. Here we have a name specific searching card, with the full Vidramon line being introduced in the second set, as well as already having promo cards designed for Vidramon themed decks and an incredibly strong secret rare Vidramon from the first set, Rena will undoubtedly be a staple in the Vidramon decks that are currently stomping the meta. Our other blue tamer is Keto Joe, with a cost of 3. Joe can rest himself when an opponent Digimon's evolution origin is discarded to give you plus one memory. And as per usual, you can play Joe for free if checked. A solid card as gaining memory is always valuable and easily doable with Blue's ability of discarding evolution origins. Moving on towards the yellow cards, we have Tailmon. With an average DP of 3000 and a play cost of three with an evolution cost of two, Tailmon comes with two effects, but no EOE. Her first effect reads, when played, if you have a purple Digimon, an opponent Digimon gets minus 4,000 DP, while her second effect gives herself plus 3,000 DP until the end of the turn whenever another one of your Digimon is destroyed on your turn. Tailmon is a tricky card to play. Her first effect, funnily enough, requires a purple Digimon, despite Tailmon being yellow. However, a minus 4,000 DP is quite a powerful effect, which is why the requirements are a bit harder to meet. Her second effect is okay, but needing to lose a Digimon just to achieve slightly above average stats for a level 4 isn't saying much. As such, I can't really recommend Tailmon for yellow decks. However, she might be a good card to tech into purple decks, as purple focuses on playing cards from the trash. Our new yellow tamer is Yagami Hikari. She's a 3 cost tamer that gives you plus 1 memory at the start of your turn if you have 3 or less security. Hikari seems to be a solid card as she gives free memory for just taking hits. Plus, 3 memory is still a decent amount, so that requirement isn't too late in the game to benefit from. For our yellow option cards, we have Neko Punch or Cat Punch if translated into English. For her 3 memory, you can minus 4000 DP from 3 of your opponent's level 3 Digimon. It also has a security effect of using its main effect when checked. Neko Punch is quite a situational card, as it only targets level 3 Digimon, you are quite restricted. While I'm not 100% sure, the text states 3 opponent Digimon and not up to 3, meaning that it might be 3 or nothing. Regardless, this card is a bit too hard to use in my opinion, regardless of its 3 or th exactly 3 situation, making it unrecommendable. Our next card is Glorious Burst, a 9 cost option card with the effect to reduce its own cost. Here it reads, for every yellow tamer you control, this card costs 1 less in hand, and it has the effect of giving an opponent Digimon minus 12,000 DP. This will destroy almost all Digimon, and with enough yellow tamers, you can do so at a fraction of the cost. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a security effect, making it less splashable than Gaia Force. Finally, for our green cards, we have the level 2 Argomon. It is a Digitama, so it only comes with an EOE, but it is an incredibly good one. It reads, when this Digimon becomes active during the active phase, gain plus one memory. This pretty much means that you just start with an extra memory every turn. While DP boosts are great, with how fast green can rush out new Digimon, having more resources to spend on evolving is huge, and I can see people choosing this as their go-to green Digitama. Probably one of the best, if not best, EOE for Digitama. Next up is my personal favorite, Pinokimon, or better known as Puppetmon in the West. Its Japanese name is derived from Pinocchio. Here, Pinokimon has 11,000 DP, a play cost of 11, and an evil cost of 3. Its first effect reads, when played, you may rest an opponent's Digimon. That Digimon doesn't become active during the opponent's next active phase. This means that one opponent Digimon is sidelined until the end of your next turn. Its second effect gives you plus one memory when it attacks, combining this with Argomon level two, and you can easily earn two free memory every turn. Sadly, while its first effect is quite powerful, the fact that you need to play Pinokimon for its 11 cost makes it less desirable than other Digimon that have better passive effects. Our next card is yet another level 6. We have Rust Tyrannomon, a 11,000 DP Digimon with a play cost of 3 and an evil cost of 4. It sports two effects as is the norm for all the newly introduced level 6 Digimon in the new second set. Its first effect allows Rust Tyrannomon to attack even active Digimon if you have a green tamer. 
Its second effect allows it to rest one opponent Digimon whenever it wins a fight. This card is actually amazing as all it needs is Pierce and combo this with Dimension Scissors, the option card from the first set, you've just decimated their field, whether the Digimon are resting or not. Our next card, Taiga, is the answer all you Rust Tyrannomon and Tyrannomon fans out there were hoping for, and then some. Costing 3 to play, or for free if checked as a security, Taiga comes with two effects. Its first effect gives all Digimon with Tyrannomon in its name Pierce. Its second effect allows you to evolve into Digimon with Tyrannomon in its name for one less. As you can clearly see, Taiga is meant to be run in Tyrannomon decks. Currently, all the known Tyrannomons are red, save for the new Rust Tyrannomon. Currently, only evolutions are restricted by color. This green tamer can easily be splashed into red Tyrannomon decks. But I have no doubt we'll be seeing a couple more Tyrannomons in the second set to support this brand new Rust Tyrannomon. As a fun fact, Taiga here, along with the blue tamer Rena, are the MCs from the Digimon game Digimon World Redigitalize. The, in that game, Rena's partner is a Vmon, hence her effects focusing on cards with V in its name. Taiga is the player character, but Rusty Tyrannomon was first introduced in this game, which is probably why Taiga was designed with Tyrannomons in mind. And with that, that's all the officially revealed cards for the red, blue, yellow, and green factions. Have any new deck ideas, combos, or comments in general? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, this is Buster Quinn here, signing off because I think I can.